Hello, I'm Marilee Prophet from OCLC Research, and I'm here today with Sarah Snyder from the Archives of American Art at the Smithsonian Institution. And we're here today to talk about our experiences with Wikipedia, how libraries and archives um, are working with Wikipedia, and uh, to talk to you about our different projects. So the project uh, that's been going forward at the Smithsonian Institution uh, has a different flavor and nature than that which is going on within OCLC research, but they do have some very important connections in common with one another. So I'm going to be talking about a little today about why Wikipedia is important and why this should be of interest to you. Well, the first thing is that it's, it's really about the numbers. Wikipedia is the most highly ranked, one of the most highly ranked uh, websites, number six in global traffic via Alexa, um, number five, I believe, in the United States. So a lot of people have their eyeballs on Wikipedia, and we want for them to be able to find things in Wikipedia and then to flow um, into libraries. So making sure that library content, library data is represented in Wikipedia is very important just by the numbers. Uh, another reason, and perhaps just as important, is that the Wikipedia community is really ideologically aligned with the library mission. And that is that their tagline, so to speak, is really the same as ours, which is to provide access to knowledge for free. To, uh, to our constituents, we want to be sure that we're providing access to information and making that as easy as possible. And that's also the global mission of Wikipedia and the Wikipedia community. And the third thing, and I think perhaps uh, a little um, less known to librarians, is how much Wikipedians really share our appreciation of quality sources. Um, so, you may uh, recall going to Wikipedia sites and you can see this little template at the top uh, chiding the Wikipedia community, this article does not cite any references or sources. Um, this ironically is an article on reference management software. Uh, citing references and sources and citing reliable references and sources is incredibly important to Wikipedians. Um, so, so we, we too share that, that value of, of very reliable and credible sources. Um, so that's, that's yet another thing that we have in common. But there are special challenges in collaborating with Wikipedia and building the types of collaborations that uh, Sarah and I have participated in. First of all, it can be really difficult to figure out who it is that you're collaborating with or negotiating with. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is um, not a place where Wikipedians work. It's really there to kind of keep the doors open, keep the servers running, uh, maybe identify some high priority projects for uh, the Wikimedia projects overall. But, but that's not who you uh, approach if you want to do, collaborate with Wikipedia. Instead, you need to collaborate, find collaborations with groups of some of the millions of uh, editors within the community, certainly um, many thousands of active editors within Wikipedia. Uh, there's a problem there in that the community of editors is really distributed and virtual, and each Wikipedia editor is really motivated by their own personal reasons for participating and volunteering in this uh, really unique and collaborative resource. Um, so it's really a, quite a challenge to connect with individuals who um, are interested in collaborating with libraries and archives, but once you can find those people, real magic can happen. An additional challenge is uh, this culture of combating what's known as link spam. So Wikipedia editors are very on guard for uh, links to sources that may be really trying to promote their own uh, search engine optimization by gaming Wikipedia in some way. So 
historically, some cultural heritage organizations have had quite a challenge linking to resources, even resources that were highly relevant to the articles at hand, because uh, editors were overly uh, perhaps on guard um, ab about linking, and perhaps there was some misunderstanding uh, on the part of cultural heritage institutions as to uh, what is appropriate linking within Wikipedia. So those are some of the challenges. An additional challenge is that library resources are can be uh, pretty hidden from a Wikipedia editor's point of view or somebody who works on Wikipedia. Um, this is a site, WikiRank, which uh, ranks the top sites that are linked to from Wikipedia. And you can see that Google Books and Amazon.com come in in the top 15. These are really easy sites for Wikipedians who are looking on the web for authoritative and credible resources, uh, easy for them to link to, because they can find these sources. Um, it is going against their own principles of uh, giving access to um, to free knowledge. Uh, in Google Books, of course, you will find open source content, um, and that's terrific. In, in Amazon, everything that you, you find there is pretty much going to hit a paywall. Um, I think that Wikipedians would prefer to link to libraries, but our resources can be pretty invisible to them. Um, so looking at this list way far down on the list, WorldCat comes in at number 81 in terms of uh, sites that are linked to from Wikipedia, and Hottie Trust is not even on the top 100. So we'd like to see what we can do to call more awareness to library resources within the Wikipedia community. Um, so what, what can be done? Well, fortunately, there is a, uh, a group of motivated individuals within Wikipedia uh, that refer to themselves as the GLAM Wiki Group. And GLAM is an acronym for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And um, when I was able to connect with this group, I found a, a number of kindred spirits who were really interested in having uh, the, the collections, the contents of cultural heritage institutions, such as libraries and archives, better represented within Wikipedia. So this is kind of... Um, our natural home, and, and who doesn't want to be glamorous? So uh, this, is, this is a good place to be. Uh, an outgrowth of the Glam Wiki project is the, the idea of a Wikipedian in residence. Um, the first Wikipedian in residence was uh, at the British Museum in 2010. It was a uh, short-term assignment, I think perhaps maybe six weeks. Um, it was conceived of by a Wikipedian who thought that this would be a great idea if he could embed himself within a cultural heritage institution and he was very interested in um, having the content of the British Museum better exposed in Wikipedia. So he proposed this to the British Museum and fortunately they went for it. Uh, since that time there have been a number of Wikipedians in residence. The Smithsonian's Archives of American Art, Sarah will talk about that in just a minute the Indianapolis Children's Museum, the National Archives in the U.S., National Library of Israel, British Library, and on and on and on. This is quite um, an international group, not only uh, representing a, a wide variety of cultural heritage ins institutions, but also that international aspect, which is, which is uh, quite, quite nice. And the idea has really spread like wildfire. If you go to Wikipedia and look up Wikipedians in residence, you will see uh, the range and number of, of residencies that uh, have uh, been developed and are on, in development even at the moment. So when I was looking for a way to work with Wikipedia, it struck me that, that having a Wikipedia in residence would really better inform our view of the opportunities for working with Wikipedia, because what better way than to um, invite somebody who was quite skilled uh, to who really knew the inner workings of Wikipedia to come work with us and tell us what they were interested in um, and not just work from a position of what we were interested in. So um, it's been a very fruitful partnership for us, but before I tell you about our story, I'm going to pause for a moment and let Sarah tell you about her story. My name is Sarah Snyder. I work at the Archives of American Art, which is one tiny corner of the Smithsonian Institution, the world's largest museum and research complex. 
The Smithsonian includes 19 museums and galleries, the National Zoo, as well as nine separate research centers, of which the Archives of American Art is one. Though the Smithsonian is probably best known for its museums, it is worth noting that it's home to over a dozen archival repositories and a system of 20 branch libraries. So much of my interest in getting involved with Wikipedia can be explained by this chart. The light blue bars represent monthly visitors to wikipedia.org, and the dark blue bars represent monthly visitors to all of the Smithsonian's websites combined. As an information professional, I am dedicated to helping people find the resources that they need. Working on Wikipedia helps me to reach as many information seekers as possible. When I joined the Smithsonian in 2007, staff had already been experimenting with editing Wikipedia over the years, with mixed results. Since many of us didn't really understand the norms of the community, we often had editors get blocked for conflict of interest. We were even accused of spamming Wikipedia with links to our websites. But in 2010, some volunteers from the DC Wikimedia chapter made contact with some Smithsonian staff members, and together they organized the beginnings of the Smithsonian Institution Wiki Project. It kicked off with an in-person training session for 30 Smithsonian staff, where we were introduced to the norms and best practices of the Wikipedia community. This event was the first time that I really grasped the passion and the commitment of the community behind the online encyclopedia. I met a number of Wikipedia editors that day. One of them, Katie Filbert, paid a follow-up visit to the Archives of American Art to speak with me and my supervisor about ways that we could work together. In the spring of 2011, Katie introduced me to another Wikipedian named Sarah Sturch, who was a grad student in Museum Studies at that time. And I encouraged Sarah to come an intern at the Archives of American Art in order to help us get more involved with the GlamWiki project. And that is how we found ourselves with a Wikipedian in residence. Our goals for a Wikipedian in residence were pretty modest. We wanted some training and mentoring. We wanted to see more of our stuff on Wikipedia, and we wanted to get to know the community. We were not really sure what to expect, but we were open to new ideas, and luckily Sarah had many. I credit our Wikipedian in residence with helping to turn me into a much more savvy Wikipedia editor and advocate, and with helping our staff understand how institutional contributions fit with the Wikipedia platform and community. She also connected us with technical experts who were able to automate both data analysis and image contributions by doing some custom scripting, which is incredibly helpful. She helped us organize backstage pass and edit-a-thon events really fun and inspiring in-person events where experts and people who are learning got to get together and work on articles. Our events have been attended by very smart people from a range of ages and backgrounds, all volunteers. The volunteers get a behind-the-scenes peek at our collections and they get to have a little Q&A time with staff. They always come away inspired to edit articles related to our collections. There's a great spirit of learning and curiosity in these events. And even though Sarah Sturch has now moved on to other projects, our organization now has a number of ongoing relationships with a core group of volunteer Wikipedia editors that we continue to work with on a regular basis. So after she finished working with the Archives of American Art, Sarah went on to serve as Wikipedian in residence at the Smithsonian Institution Archives for an additional semester. By the time she left in 2012, an internal Wikipedian community of staff, librarians, archivists, and museum folk had emerged. Since that time, there have been two subsequent edit-a-thons at the institution, at the American Art Museum last August, and a Wikipedia Loves Libraries event at the Smithsonian Libraries this past October. Wikipedia Loves Libraries, which you see here, uh, was our largest and best attended event yet, with around 40 people in attendance. It took place in the main library of the National Museum of Natural History. We even got a small grant from the DC Wikimedia chapter to help provide everybody who attended with a free lunch. The attendees were equally impressed by our collection of rare books and rare echinoderms. One of our greatest successes, in my mind, besides connecting with the community, is our foray into putting our public domain images on the Wikimedia Commons. All Archives of American Art contributed images include a custom template with our approved metadata and multiple links pointing back to our website. 
After we uploaded our first batch of images, we didn't really do anything else to work on them, but I'm happy to say that the Wikimedia volunteer community set right to work on their own. Hundreds of our images are now being used to illustrate numerous articles on Wikipedia sites in 25 different languages, from biography pages to articles on life drawing and art education to history articles. Let me share one example. Here is the Archives of American Arts record for one of the images that we contributed. It's a WPA photograph of the Harlem Renaissance sculptor Augusta Savage. Over a 90-day period, according to Google Analytics, this page on our website had 29 page views. Could be better. But the Wikipedia article on Augusta Savage was viewed 2,706 times in the same 90-day period. And what does this article feature front and center? The photograph of her that we contributed to Wikimedia Commons, with our repository's citation, metadata, and multiple collection links close at hand. At this point, the Archives of American Art is getting a sizable amount of web traffic from the Wikimedia family of, web of websites. For the past few years, Wikipedia has been our single biggest referring URL, and is responsible for about 5% of our overall inbound site traffic. By comparison, Twitter brings us about 2% of site traffic and Facebook 1%. Given the relatively small amount of, of maintenance energy that we put into Wikipedia, given, especially when compared to the upkeep, upkeep required on our social media accounts, uh, Wikipedia gives a very nice return on our investment. But even if we didn't get the visitor traffic back to our primary website, it seems to me that diffusing our digital assets to a greater audience on sites like Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Commons is the right thing to do. Isn't this why we digitize our collections after all? So we can share them with the broadest possible audience? Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to pick up here, pick up the story here at back at OCLC and tell you about our experience with our Wikipedia and residents. We were really interested in uh, having a residency that focused on two dimensions. Um, one is looking at the special role that library data could play with, with, within Wikipedia. Um, OCLC obviously has a, a stake and in interest and expertise in dealing with library data, so we were really interested in exploring um, those avenues and seeing what special role OCLC could play in this, and also looking as a nonprofit that touches many thousands of librarians worldwide, we wanted to see what we could do um, uh, to develop a program that would have an educational and outreach uh, component for librarians, so talking to librarians about Wikipedia and telling them, uh, spreading the word more about how they could get involved, uh, talk to them about the GLAM Wiki project, and talk to them about uh, various ways that they could uh, get involved and, and really heighten their awareness and uh, spread some of the spread some of the things that we were learning around in the community a little a little more. So I'm going to talk about um, our first project and the project that Max has mainly been involved in, um, which is uh, which is looking at um, what we've called VFBot. VF is the Virtual International Authority File. It's uh, a project that is managed by OCLC, and it is a merger of 20-some um, national authority files from, uh, from many countries. Um, it's, it's multilingual. It's, uh, it has broad representation um, and, and really is a place for, uh, for authority files to, to be merged. One of the things that I discovered, much to my surprise, when I talked to people from the Wikipedia community, is that disambiguation is really important, and disambiguation of names is is really important to them. Um, and uh, to give you to give you an idea of uh, how this is handled in Wikipedia, let's take a look at this uh, disambiguation page for John Adams. Um, so John Adams is many people, um, and it's important to know which John Adams you're, you're looking for. If you search on John, for John Adams on Wikipedia, you may get to this page, Disambiguation. It starts with politicians, uh, goes on to composers, and, and goes down even quite a ways uh, below this. You can scroll down, down, down on this page. There are many John Adams. 
Um, so there was really a growing recognition of the importance of library name authorities. And Wikipedians were aware that library name authorities were out there and that they were valuable. And um, some Wikipedia articles had started incorporating what they call authority control into their articles. So not too surprisingly, the German language Wikipedia uh, had already started to add in authority control. And, um, and within the German language Wikipedia, I think um, several thousand articles already had authority data in, a, in an authority control template. Um, but the English language Wikipedia had only about 4,000 articles with authority data. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, at, at VFBot. Let's take a look at the authority uh, control template. So here's the lengthy article on John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you will see this little template, um, authority control. And uh, this is where um, Wikipedians were starting to put links to various um, various name authorities in, in national files. Uh, so we, we were asked to help out on this. Um, here is VF and uh, John Quincy Adams records. So if you, uh, if you followed that link, you would wind up here on John Quincy Adams VF page. Uh, so VFBot has now edited um, over a quarter of a million articles which now have library authority data in them and links to VF. Um, this is out of roughly a million articles that are about people on the English language Wikipedia. So you can see that this project has already had a pretty significant impact um, on Wikipedia. And, in, and indeed, we can see people uh, now following those links um, from Wikipedia through, through to VF. Um, well, this sounds like a pretty simple thing, like we just threw a switch, like our Wikipedia in Residence Max just uh, threw a switch and the magic happened. But in fact, there were many, many, uh, there was the approval process for getting a bot or a robot to do all of this editing um, uh, programmatically was quite slow. Um, the Wikipedia community uses bots or approaches the use of bots quite cautiously. They have a long-standing um, uh, tradition of creating and editing articles by hand. Um, almost everything that you see on Wikipedia is done by humans who care very much about what they're doing and how they do it. Um, so the approval process was necessarily slow and took a great deal of caution. So it was, um, it went in many stages. First there was um, some discussion online in a place called the Village Pump. Then there was a, a, a formal um, request for approval for the bot once it had gone through the discussion stage and people had generally agreed that it was a good thing. Then there was testing and more testing. Um, and then uh, running the bot in stop and start mode uh, along the way, um, Max discovered uh, that there were bugs in the bot, and uh, as it ran across Wikipedia, it would run into those bugs and uh, have to be stopped and fixed um, sort of midway. So I'm going to take you through some of the steps. And of course, the wonderful thing about Wikipedia is that everything happens on Wikipedia, and you can view all parts of this. So if you're curious, you can go to the uh, village pump and view the discussion on authority control integration and you can see um, that back in June uh, this discussion started and um, for the most part this discussion was was quite positive there were a few people um, who were truly skeptical about this um, people asked questions very good questions and the discussion here really helped to shape the bot creation um, so it, it wasn't just something that Max cooked up and then went forward with. It was really shaped from the very beginning by this uh, discussion that happened on Wikipedia. Um, the next thing that happened was, uh, as I mentioned, a formal request for approval. Um, and this too had a discussion and it, it, it laid out um, how, the, how the bot was going to um, proceed and uh, it was approved as you can see but again you can go see all of the discussion there 
And then once it had approved, uh, Max was able to create an account with the username VFBot. And you can go to the VFBot user page and look at user and look at the VFBot uh, uh, information about VFBot. But furthermore, you can go to the talk page on VFBot and see all of the terrific feedback that we received from the Wikipedia community once the VFBot started to run and all of the uh, really great and concrete um, suggestions that we got, uh, alerts when it wasn't working correctly, um, et cetera, that went, that went on. So if you're curious about that, you can go to the VFBot user page. Um, I'm going to switch now from talking about library data and talk about education and outreach because we think that um, as a library services organization, OCLC has the ability to reach many, many librarians and that we can do so um, at scale. Uh, and what we've really been doing is focusing on, um, we've had a series of webinars uh, focusing on what we've called Wik Wikipedia literacy for librarians. Um, we had two separate webinars in uh, July and August. One was targeted at research libraries through the, uh, and pushed out through OCLC research. And uh, with the other webinar, we targeted public libraries working with OCLC's Web Junction. Uh, which has fantastic connections within the public library community. And there were over 500 librarians that attended uh, the, the live events, um, so the, the live uh, webcasts. And we know that these uh, webcasts have been viewed uh, after the fact, but just the fact that we were able to put on two webcasts and reach over 500 librarians um, was really great. We've also done some in-person um, events. We had a, a Wikipedia Loves Libraries event at Wikimania, which was held in Washington, D.C. Uh, during July, and filled a room. Uh, I think we had um, probably at peak around 100 people attending this, and this was a mix of Wikipedians and librarians, pretty easily, evenly split. Um, a lot of energy and excitement about Wikipedia collaborating with, uh, with libraries, and um, a lot of support for our, for our idea of working with library data in, in Wikipedia. Um, we also experimented with a MOOC, a particular MOOC on the platform called P2PU, which is Peer-to-Peer -peer University. Um, this was uh, themed around Open Access Week, but it's still available. Anybody can go and take it, and this is a, um, a six or seven part uh, class that you can take in components. And when you complete it, you can get a badge on your on your Wikipedia user page um, saying that you've uh, completed this open access media challenge. Um, and this is, again, to help introduce librarians to the concepts um, uh, in Wikipedia and uh, learn how to do a little editing, learn how to create a user account, and become acquainted with some of the um, uh, some of the concepts behind Wikipedia. Switching over to the results that we have, have had in VFBot, um, you can see the, the lines at the bottom of the page are, uh, it's kind of hard to see on your screen perhaps, but um, this shows overall inbound traffic into um, VF, the Virtual International Authority File. And the purple line that you can see kind of hanging out in the middle there is the um, German language Wikipedia. And I mentioned a while ago that the German uh, Wikipedians have for some time been, been adding in links to library authority data, and VF was one of their sources. But right around the time that we started running the bot in October, you can see the English language Wikipedia um, coming in and actually lifting the curve of uh, traffic coming into VF uh, in a noticeable way, and then continuing right on through uh, into the end of November. Um, we're not sure if this is a trend that's going to hold, if these are Wikipedians who are um, curious about what these links are and following them through, but um, we think that this is probably uh, a, a, a trend where people see the links at the bottom of the page, are curious about them for one reason or another, and, and may follow them through. Um, I'm going to talk about a, kind of a a more tangible sort of result. And this is um, a story that we heard from a cataloger named uh, John Myers, in, um, un from, who works at Union College in Schenectady, New York. And he wrote to us back in October to report 
I had an Arabic name to enter into a record as part of a note, and I wasn't confident about the diacritics. So I looked in an authority file to temporarily download it, copy the file of the name, and move on. And he couldn't find the name in OCLC uh, because, again, he wasn't sure of the, the diacritics. So he looked it up in Wikipedia under his common name, and bingo, he, he found the guy in Wikipedia. So here's his article. Even better, he continues, Wikipedia has a link to VF, double bingo. With the authorized form of the name in VF, I could readily find the record in OCLC. The miracles of an interconnected bibliographic dataverse. Thank you for your efforts. It made my work and my catalog possible. But what's really uh, nice to us is that um, we got this note from him, I think, on uh, July, or on October um, 12th. And when we looked back, uh, VFBot had added that uh, VF link just days before. So this is a real... Um, a fine example of, of how VF is working to actually help not only Wikipedians to send big UAT names, but also uh, to help with catalogers. Um, so looking for, oh, and here is, um, here is uh, that, that individual's uh, name in VF and his VF record. So we think that there are more opportunities um, to extend our Wikipedia Loves Libraries events. Um, here is a picture from a, an event we had uh, just weeks ago at the Seattle Public Library. Um, we think that public libraries are probably great spaces to bring together uh, Wikipedians in person together with librarians. So here we, had, we brought together um, librarians from the Seattle Public Library uh, a small group of very experienced um, Seattle Wikipedians who are really interested in working on uh, re documenting local history and culture in Seattle, um, together with some people from the University of Washington who work in the University of Washington Libraries and Archives, who were quite interested in learning more about Wikipedia and more about the role that their resources might play uh, within Wikipedia. Um, it was a small event, as you can imagine, something on a Saturday in December might be, uh, but we had really great energy in the group, and uh, people made a lot of good connections, and we're going to be following up to see um, how we can uh, help in encourage this, uh, this group meeting and think about how we can scale out these types of meetings um, going forward. We also think we could uh, perhaps develop a best practices document for librarians adding content to Wikipedia. Um, other suggestions we've had are how can you find Wikipedians within your local community? If you're starting from scratch, how do you, how do you make those connections and contacts? So those are all things that um, we're thinking that, that we could probably help with uh, providing some documentation and, and some guidance for people who, who want, want to get started. Um, so there's certainly a lot going on there. Um, there's also additional opportunities, we think, for library data. So uh, you've probably seen these little sidebars within Wikipedia. They're called info boxes. Um, if you look on a, an article that is about a book, you will see a template that's called info box book, and it contains uh, fields, optional fields, that look a lot like metadata. Um, so we'd like to uh, put in ways, um, an OCLC number perhaps, um, maybe help to populate these, uh, these info boxes based on uh, WorldCat data um, and put in easy ways for people to get to um, that book in their local library, uh, which is uh, certainly something we can help with. Um, and I think, again, just making sure that uh, library resources and the ability to get to library resources is highlighted within Wikipedia and for Wikipedians is, is a very positive thing um, and something that we can help with. So we'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Sarah and I would be very delighted to get your questions. Um, you can feel free to email us or uh, get in touch with us on Twitter. Um, we, we, we hope to hear from you, and, and thanks for attending this presentation.